Hello everyone. If you're watching this video, I'm hoping that it's because you purchased one of these kits from me on how to create a stained glass nightlight. Here's everything that's going to be needed to create the Hummingbird stained glass nightlight kit. Just a piece of paper towel, a couple of toothpicks, of course the shell with the piercings already in it, and the paints that are required for this particular piece right here. I'm going to do this video with the light box underneath this large paper towel so that uh, you don't see the large shadows that will be coming up underneath as I'm creating the video. You'll be able to see it a little bit better with the light shining from the bottom even though it's not noticeable now it will definitely help. It doesn't matter what color you start with the picture that's on the kit will show you what colors are needed and of course the paints will be included in the kit but you can start whatever with whatever color you want now I'm going to start with the purple the only place purple is on this hummingbird as I designed it is going to be in the beak uh, what I'd like to do is get your bottle turn it over and then just put a little drop on paper towel the reason why you do that is you want to make sure that there are no air bubbles that are going to be coming out what I like to do is go ahead and start at one end and just barely get the paint into the tip. Then you can go along to the other end and squeeze the paint till it fills it. It's okay that it's a little bit messy right there because we're going to draw it out. And using surface tension, just like that, you're going to fill up that gap. Now the toothpicks are necessary for this just wipe the edge of that, wipe the toothpick on your towel and you've completed your first piercing with paint. Now as I'm creating my stained glass night lights what I like to do is I like to have an overhead light so that I can hold up the night light to the light like so and I can see from the bottom where the thick spots are and where the th thin spots are and if necessary I will get the toothpick and just draw out where I noticed it was thicker and just barely draw a little bit more paint to the thinner spots and then you can push it up to that light again and check your work again that's the only place that the purple is necessary on this particular design so I'll put that away Next color I'm going to use is going to be red. Same thing. I want to squeeze just a little dab onto the paper towel, run it by, make sure that there's no air bubbles in it. And same thing with this. Just start off at one point, put a little dab of paint in there, make sure it touches the ends and the walls, and then go to this end. And same thing, you're going to use surface tension to draw the paint so it connects. Toothpick again, just to clean it up on the edges. Now after I cut out a design from the night lights, I like to go ahead and spray a gloss coat over the shell. The reason why I do that is it helps fill up the microscopic pores that are in the eggshell. That makes it a little bit easier to clean and wipe off any excess paint that you might have on one of these cavities. It's not mandatory, it's not necessary. When I first started doing this, I would just get the raw shell and start coloring and then I would gloss coat the, everything when I was finished. But I found with experience that it's a lot easier to just clean up the edges with the toothpick if the shell has been gloss coated. Everything that's in my kit, I will provide a gloss coated shell for you. So you won't have those problems cleaning up the edges. I try to make my kits as user friendly as possible. Okay, so believe it or not, that's all the red we need for that nightlight. So I'll put the red away. Now I'm going with white. Of course, want to run it up against paper towel and make sure that there's no bubbles in there. Looks like I have a little piece of dried paint at the tip. 
again, you want to make sure all that stuff is clean before you apply it to the eggshell. I don't know if you see this or not, but I just draw out, drew out an air bubble. Those are really difficult to get out of the cavities, but not impossible. Alright, so this is going to be a larger cavity as you can tell. Not going to be necessarily as easily easily done as the purple and red. But it's going to be the same concept. You want to go to the tip, drop some paint. If there's another pointy tip, drop the paint there in the corners, in the corner. Now all I do is I make sure and coat the wall of the cavity. Very, just apply a little bit of pressure to the bottle to let some paint come out. But once the paint starts coming out, you want to just let the surface tension do its trick. So there you can see that I have all three walls of that particular cavity covered with paint. That's going to make it a lot easier for the paint to stick when I apply it now. Here's where you want to be really careful and you're going to want to use the edge or the nozzle rather to help you along with this. You're going to rest it up against the wall here and make sure the paint touches and then squeeze some glue out. It might take a couple tries. There you go. The cavity is closed. That's not going to be possible if you don't run the edge of the nozzle along this wall right here. And then before it gets too tacky, you want to just clean up where this paint overran on the wall. Just with the tip of the toothpick there. Now just looking at this cavity, I can see that there's a lot of excess paint right here at this end. So what I'm going to do is just draw very carefully, draw some of that paint to where it's thinner. And there you're done with the white. I'm going to put the white away and I'm going to go with some green and we'll apply some white later on in a couple of areas. Here again, want to apply some paint onto the paper towel, make sure that there's no bubbles, make sure that the nozzle isn't clogged. There's been times where I've put the paint down to the paper towel and the nozzle was clogged and there you go you can see that right there it's got some dried up paint to the nozzle you do not want this bottle to come unplugged when you're doing the nightlight because you will have paint everywhere so this paper towel is going to be your friend what I'm going to do the next cavity with green same concept put paint at the end move over Put paint to this end, and then looks like an air bubble came out there, but I was able to catch it before it stuck. Just wipe the long paper towel and come back to your work. Put paint on that wall. I'm going to come along, put paint on this wall. And the way we did it with the white cavity, the large white cavity, you'll do with this. You want to rest your nozzle on the edge of that back wall here and just start squeezing some paint. It's okay, it might take a couple tries. But there you go. Now with my kits, I include a large half shell that have that has a lot of cavities already carved into it for practice. If you're not familiar with this technique, that's why I provide the half shell so that you can pr practice with it before you attempt the actual night light. So there you go. We did the green. Every time I fill up a cavity, I do the same thing. I apply paint to the paper towel and make sure there's no bubbles. Of course, the smaller cavities are going to be easier, but it's all the same concept. You want to make sure to coat the walls with paint very carefully get the tip there 
and then draw out your paint. You can see better in person than on this video where you have excess paint up on the shell. So you can just clean it off with the tip of the toothpick. Alright. <clears throat> I don't know if you saw me there or not, but I applied paint to the paper towel to make sure there's no bubbles. Come into this tip. Go to this tip. And... The entire time you're doing this, you want to be very aware of where you've already applied paint. Your fingers are going to you're going to have the tendency to want to rest your fingers on the shell or or hold it from the bottom. If you do that, it's going to be a disaster and it's going to be real tough to clean up. It's not going to ruin your work. You can fix it, but it's going to add a lot of time to it. Yeah, just apply paint to the wall. Applying paint to the wall here and then connecting all of it. With the narrow cavities, it's a lot easier. You want to be very conscious of what kind of cavities you're putting into your shell if you're not using a kit that I cut out for you and you're doing it on something that you've cut out. You want to be very conscious of how thick, how long, how wide your your cavities are. And also, because of the radius of the shell, it goes down up down any cavities you put along the edge here it's going to be wanting to pull so you want the smaller cavities along the edges whenever the design allows okay now on to the next cavity I'm going to start talking less because now you've already seen what I'm going to do and I'm just going to be repeating myself and it's going to get monotonous. You can just watch what I'm doing and see that I'm just repeating myself on the eggshell. As you get going, it starts to get a little easier and a little bit more comfortable. You'll recognize the tendencies of the shell tendencies of the paint they find out what works and what doesn't work as far as the cavity sizes the cavity placement and so on and so on I've tried to make these kits as user friendly as possible for both beginners and people who might have experience with things like this okay so there you can see that I've got the film of paint over that entire wing but obviously there's no paint there in the middle but there is a film so carefully just add some more paint to it just like that and then clean up the edges the smaller cavities you're not going to have to clean up the edges very much it's just where you're running the nozzle along the edge to help create that surface tension and film the smaller cavities you're not going to have as much of a problem with that okay so all I'm doing is just evening out the paint I can see some thick spots and thin spots and I'm just filling them up we're going to do a couple more with green and then we're going to bring the white back just wiping off the tip of my nozzle when you're running your nozzle on the edge of that to try to create that film what's going to happen is you're going to have a buildup of paint there when you're connecting everything so you want to wipe that off before you go on to the next cavity always be careful where you have paint
I'm going to bring the white back and fill in the last of those. Ideally, you want to go ahead and give the different colors time to dry a little bit or at least set. If I blow on this, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but if I blow on this, you can see how wet this paint is. I'm not sure if you're able to see the film move with the wind, <clears throat> but it is still very wet. And if you're not careful, you start holding it at harsh angles like that, you will have that paint wanting to run to the bottom. So always try to keep it level and never never rush yourself. I'm doing this video a little bit faster than I would normally do a night light just because of the time. If you do get a little bit of paint on the edge of the shell here, right here, um, on the cavity, right there. These paints are transparent and they dry transparent, so it's not like you're going to ruin the nightlight if you don't get those edges cleaned perfectly. So don't worry too much if, if you end up getting you know, a lot of paint like, like that, you know, and it doesn't clean off perfectly don't don't worry too much about it the way that paint is on right there it's going to dry clear and since it's white especially you won't even notice it with practice you'll learn the different little tricks and things to make sure to get a cleaner night light but these designs that I created for these kits were made to be as simple and as beautiful as possible I hope you enjoy them It's coming along pretty well. I think I'm going to do one more thing of green here. This is the first nightlight I've done of the Hummingbird. So I don't even have a set palette as to what I'm going to do. So I'm going to experiment a little bit and hope I come out with a good looking nightlight. Now these tips you want to be really careful with when they're extremely pointy like this. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's not all the way at the very end. So what I will do on something like that is I will take the toothpick and just push the paint to the tip. I don't want to use the tip of the nozzle on these extremely pointy parts, especially when they're close to other cavities. Because what's going to end up happening is I'm going to get a big ball of paint and it's going to drip onto the cavity there next to it and it's going to ruin that cavity so it's okay on these real narrow parts to just go ahead and put a dab of paint there and then push it along with your toothpick
I'm really hoping this video is coming out okay because I only have one of each of these designs to make the videos and if the videos don't come out right I don't get a second chance okay I think that's gonna be all for the the green now we're gonna go back to white we've got three more cavities to fill and then we're basically done I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the hot glue gun So that it heats up by the time we're ready to glue this onto the nightlight base, which is another thing I'm going to show you how to do. These smaller cavities are obviously much easier to fill up. But you need to be careful with those because it's easy to overfill them like I just did. If you do get too much paint and you end up with a dome of paint on your cavity, all you have to do is just get your toothpick and using the wicking ten, um, technique, just touch the toothpick to it and suck up some of that paint out of there and wipe your toothpick off on a paper towel. And you'll be fine. Got a huge air bubble in that end right there. So what I'll do is just pierce it with the toothpick. Doesn't work. <laughs> so this is why you don't want to get your bu air bubbles in your, your paint. It's extremely difficult to take off. I'm lucky that this is just the end and it's not the entire cavity that has a bubble in it because this I could just pull it up like that and just pop the air bubble. And let's try this again. I really put too much paint on that one. But it's easily cleaned. And now I'll just even it all out so that it looks the same thickness everywhere. And we've got one cavity go and we're done. Kind of overdid it with the paint on that one too, so I'm going to just pull up a little bit of paint from that. That's pretty much it right there. That's your stained glass nightlight with the hummingbird on it. Normally what you would want to do is let all that paint dry for, well, the best overnight before attaching the nightlight base on it. But again, since we're pressed for time, now that we're making a video... I am going to show you what I do next. Here's the nightlight base that I use. When you buy these online, there's a little bit of a nub right there. I cut that off so that this whole thing is level and flat. I'm not sure why they put that little nub there, but I, I, I need to cut it off when I'm making nightlights. All I do is get my hot glue gun, which is ready now. And try as quickly as you can before it starts cooling off. Be generous with the glue. And just press the nightlight on there. 
And of course you're going to want to hold it until it cools off a little bit. Make sure everything's centered. Try not to move it around too much because then the glue will not have a good stick. Okay, and then what you want to do is just go ahead and make sure to fill up any gaps. I'm not crazy about how there's not enough glue on the back of that, so I'm just going to get the glue gun and carefully apply more glue because it's still a little bit warm. probably has movement. There you go. And there's your hummingbird nightlight. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ever ask me anything. Have a good day.